Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's NROUTE webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today, and our presenter is Aaron Clapp, Application Specialist at SAI. He knows everything there is to know about NROUTE, and today he'll be walking us through the new features in the latest release of NROUTE. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have, either about NROUTE 23 or any other NROUTE topics. So feel free to put those questions in the chat, and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always, so if you want to review anything that Aaron discusses, we'll be sending you the link to the recording this afternoon, so look out for that in your emails. And that's it for me, so I'll turn it over to Aaron. All right, so we got a new version of Enroute out, and there's a lot of new features. We wanted to kind of quickly and just uh, show some of those off and... Um, we won't be going into a ton of detail on how the, each one of these works, but if you do go to our YouTube channel uh, or you go to uh, thinksai.com and then click on what's new for NROUT, uh, you can actually see a few small videos uh, on either YouTube or our website uh, that will show kind of a small clip on how each one of these tools work. Now, of course, we are going to be doing webinars specifically for each for a lot of these tools. Um, so if you want a more of a deep dive, stay tuned for those. But today I'm going to kind of fly through some of these because I want to give you the best overview of some of the new features in NROUT 20, uh, 23. So let's get started. Uh, so the first one that we want to mention is our user interface. Now the user interface is going to look very similar to uh, NROUT 7. And that user interface was customizable, but now we have an option in our software to be able to set up your own user interface. So in the help menu, setup manager, this was here before, but it didn't really have this interface. This was something where you could do if you knew how to edit an XML file, but now we have a nice user interface for this to do this with. You can customize anything you want. You can customize your shortcuts. You can customize what shows up in your menus up here. So like your draw, transform, surfaces. You can change every one of those things. You can uh, select a menu, change what's inside of it. So for example, my file menu, my relief, mesh surfaces, I can change all that. Or I can edit my toolbars. So I can create new toolbars, remove toolbars. I can customize everything I want. So this is really nice because now it has a user interface that you guys can use. You can customize your NROP to whatever you want it to be. So that's going to be a, a, a really nice feature for you guys, especially making it much easier to customize your shortcuts and the way that you use NROP. Because uh, each one of you has a different way of using the software and you use different tools. And so whatever the priority for your tools are, it would be really nice. And now you have the ability to create a, your own custom toolbars or a custom toolbar with all your favorite tools. So this is something that's new in NRAO. And you can save these um, and import them uh, up through the help menu and whatnot right through here. So you've got all your setup options and things here. So you can go back to the original or use the setup manager to create new ones. So we'll be diving into that at some point, but that's a really nice new feature is complete customization of the software. Uh, another big one is gonna be profile tools. Now I'm pretty excited about this one as well because this has been a feature request that a lot of people have had over the years. It's been a, a highly requested item from our users. So this comes directly from you guys, and it is profile tools. We now support profile tools in, in NROUTE. Now before, profile tools were always kind of a little bit of a gray area in NROUTE. So if we go to our setup menu and you go to tool library, we never really had the ability to create custom tools in NROUTE. Uh, you had a few, uh, you always had the option to create like a, a, a user defined tool, but it was never, it was hard to kind of get it to work. So now we have the new option for 
custom tools and profile tools. So this is the icon for that, and this is what it looks like. What I wanted to show you just real quick was how we can do that. So um, I actually have a tool here that I've created, and I think I'm going to delete it so that you guys can kind of see here. Let's go to our this one, and we'll delete that one, and we'll recreate this one. All right. So the way that how do we do this? Well, uh, the nice thing is is that you can take any tool that you want, uh, and usually manufacturers will have the tools already for you. Now this is kind of this is just highlighting one particular one that I just had found, but Amana Tools or Amana Tools. Uh, will often allow you to download the DXF files. And this is probably the case with a lot of tool manufacturers these days. And when you download that DXF file, it pulls, you can pull that into NROUTE. So what I want to do is open a new file. And let's see. I'm going to open this up here. So what I've done is I imported the DXF file. Now there's a bunch of measurements and other things that I didn't necessarily need, but I just grabbed the profile part of the tool. And then what I did is I saved it as an ROU file. So that's gonna be how you create these custom tools, right? So you bring in the DXF or you create the profile or you import the profile, you set it up into the file, and then we save it as an ROU file. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I'm going to go into a blank file, and this is easy as going into our setup menu here. Go to Tool Library, click New, Profile. We're going to call this Amana Tool. And then all I have to do is click Set Profile. Here's my, my tool. Hit Open. And just like that now, I have a tool that's exactly defined by the tool that we just created or that we just saw here on that website. So this is a powerful new tool. Not only that, and not only is it good for creating tools, we also now support what rendering of these tools. So if I go in here and I choose one of my profile tools, Here's another Amana tool that has been added uh, by default in the software. Let's use that one. Okay. And now when we go into our 3D simulate, Zoom in here. It might be a little bit hard to see, but the idea here is, is that we can now preview any of these custom tools that we've created. Whereas before, you just set them up as an end mill, and then you kind of had just had to hope it would work. Now you can create the custom tool in NROUTE, and you can preview the custom tool inside the 3D. This is a big game changer for any of you guys who are creating like crown moldings type stuff or any kind of shaker door or some kind of a panel front door or something like that to a cabinet or any, any case where you would use a custom profile tool. Now all custom profile tools are supported and are previewable inside the 3D uh, rendering of the tool. So that's a really big one. So I, I'm uh, that one we're really excited about and I'm sure you guys are going to uh, – Take advantage of that one right away. The other one that's kind of related to profile tools is the uh, corner find toolpath. This is a new toolpath that we're introducing in NROUTE. And what this will allow us to do, and I've created a file here to kind of help us through this. Here I have kind of what maybe you would call like a door or something like that. This got some inside shapes here. And we can now create, if I use an island fill, I've got my hogging out tool, I've got my profile tool, 
And then I have a ball end mill here for the fine tool path. And what this basically does is this allows us to create custom sharp corners. So one of the things that perhaps when using a, a round over bit or some kind of a profile tool, it would create these rounded corners. And it kind of always gave you the sense that, yeah, this was kind of a, this is a, a door or a shape that was kind of a CNC because of those rounded corners, right? This corner fine tool takes care of that in sharpening the corners. Not only does it sharpen the outside edges now so that you get a nice sharp transition between the corners, but it also does it on the inside of the corners. And we can kind of see that if we go to the perspective view. We zoom in a little bit. You can see here, let's zoom in in this corner over here. A little bit too far there. Here's what it's done. Yeah, let's zoom out just a little bit. There we go. So this is what that corner fine toolpath is now done. What this has done is it's taken the, the, the profile of my tool and it's automatically created a toolpath to clean up and sharpen up this corner with a small little ball end mill. And so that's creating a nicer, sharper corner so you can get those nice sharp corners inside of your file. So if we were to say preview this, let's uh, limit our 3D simulate to the contour here because we don't need to preview the whole thing and increase our resolution a little bit. The end result here is much sharper corners. Uh, and the blue color there is just ind indicative of our, uh, our type of tool path that we're using. But now we're getting nice sharp corners here versus just plain rounded corners in this area right here. So this is a nicer sharp corner. You got the nice sharp corners here as well. So that is our new corner fine tool path. Again, we'll kind of probably go more in detail about this in another webinar, go through the steps, what are the best practices, that kind of thing. But this is one of the new features in NROUT. So let's pull up a new file. One of the other uh, new things in NROUT is gonna be a new texture. So this is probably something if you do 3D uh, a lot. Again, I'm kind of flying through a lot of these steps here. But uh, one of the new options here is uh, peeled pole. Let's go ahead and apply this here. And then we will preview that. So now we have an option for a peeled pole texture, which is kind of a unique, uh, nice texture kind of gives the uh, feeling of um, a kind of a rough or uh, rustic kind of furniture, kind of home decor kind of kind of vibe. So this is a, a new texture for Enroute uh, in 3D spaces. So if you're looking at, or if you're doing a lot of 3D, this is one of the new textures that uh, was added into Enroute. So that is that one there. The other thing that we've added to, and sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. I didn't really organize these in any sort of way. Um, is on the topic of tooling again, uh, we have added the ability for you to add curve tools. So this is for all you plasma guys or water jet or laser guys, this is gonna be the tool that you use for uh, your curve compensation. So it used to always be that you'd have to set it up as an end mill and you'd have to say curve and then give it, give it your name, uh, you know, 0 0.003 or whatever the, the, the width was, you had to, to set it up like this. Now we no longer have to do that. We've added its own tool. So curve is its own tool now. Uh, and uh, you can kind of see here that by default, 
we've added in a lot more support for a bunch of different curve sizes that you might run into. So for your plasma or for your water jet or for your lasers and things like that. So again, another add to tooling uh, that is really kind of a nice uh, feature add for those who use those kinds of machines. Speaking of tool pathing and uh, tools, there is a new option in NROUTE for no lift tool pathing. So this is going to be something we'll go into detail again in the future. But um, in the preferences, so set up preferences, if we go to our tool path under general, we have the ability to show or not show the no lift options. So right now, by default, it's unchecked. Uh, the reason being, this being a decision where uh, some managers of shops may or may not want to have employees give them the option for low lift. Uh, that was kind of some of the feedback that we had gotten from that. And so we have the option here to turn it on or off. If we turn it on, basically what this does is it gives us several new options inside of the tool pathing screen. So we go to routing offset. Let's choose a end mill. And if we go in here under, first of all, we need to set a final depth. So let's put in 0.5. And let's see here. Down here at the end, we see our lift options. So we can have standard, material, value, or none. So this basically gives you some flexibility. So standard will lift up to its standard lift height. Material will lift up to the height of the material, then plunge back down. Value will lift up to a specific value. So I can define that here, how much I want it to lift up between passes. Or I can choose none, and this will give me a uh, no lift tool pass. So basically it's going to do one pass, go back to its original start point and plunge straight down without lifting out of the material. So that is a new option for um, uh, no lift tool pass uh, in uh, route 20, 2023. The other thing we also have added is a new feature for vectorization. I know a lot of people have asked for color vectorization. That is now a new option inside of NROUT. So let's open up a file here. So I've just uh, pulled in a file here. Uh, it's just a, a JPEG. And now we can more successfully and more and, and correctly color trace or vectorize color. So we also added a option for centerline vectorization as well. So now we've got centerline. So this is your standard vectorization that you're typically used to. So you got those options there. Now we've added centerline and color vectorize. So this is a new option here. And this is really nice because before we couldn't really do color. Uh, it was always black and white. That was kind of the best thing you had to do. Um, and that is an option uh, available to you now. Another bunch of changes that we've done are to ATP. We're always making changes and updates to ATP, make that process a little bit better for you guys. There's been a few things that we've done. So we've added uh, some new ATP time estimates. So now uh, when it creates the... Um, the printout for each nested sheet, you're going to get time estimates with that. And those will also be shown in the nesting report when it's finished nesting as well. So those will both be created uh, in there. We've also made some changes to no application. So if you're not using a cabinet application, but you still want to use ATP, um, you can do that. And that has been improved. So now we've made it easier for you to import parts uh, and to map those things. The process is much simpler, a little bit easier. You can add multiple files. This process is a little bit easier, a little bit less buggy. 
So we have changed this, updated it, made it more powerful for those who do not use an application like KCD, Cabinet Solutions, or something like that, but still have files that use layers and want to use the power of ATP. So this has been much improved uh, and changed as well. Along with uh, ATP and kind of drivers and things like that, We've also added the ability for you to print out your, um, your tool changer option. So in the driver selection right here, you can print out your tool changer. So what this basically does is this will print out um, all of your tools and the way that you have them set up in your tool changer. So when you have this option open, and you have your tools assigned, it'll print out which tools are in which position. It'll also print out the drill bank so that you can have a, an idea of how you have your drill bank set up and all the different tools that are set up there. Again, this is kind of a quality of life uh, improvement here. So you can kind of get a visual uh, for what's how you have the tools set up in NROUT. So you have a visual way of seeing that. We also have added a few new features for our snaps. We've got a new option for uh, snap to plate. So now we can easily snap something to the plate if we want to, uh, whereas that wasn't an option before. We also have options for saving. So one of the things that uh, customers had issues with or, or thought that would be help, uh, help us or help you guys is if we had options for saving um and how to save so how am i going to save this drawing application so we now have several different options we can save the active drawing we can save it to a backup drawing or we can save the backup to a specific backup path so if i want it to create this is really good for iteration for example so if every 10 minutes i want it to create a new backup that way you have backups. And if something happens to your existing one, you can go right to the, the last backup and then you can just proceed from there. This is something that sometimes would happen where they would forget to save or maybe they did save, but they lost too much. This way you can have iterations or perhaps if you made some changes to the document and you wanted to go back to previous versions of the document, you could actually do that with these with this option now here. So this is kind of a nice, unique feature for those who are wanting to get a little bit more out of maybe versioning or something like that, or just have a better option for uh, saving uh, files automatically so that you don't lose anything if something happens to your document while you're working on it. Along the same lines of little tools, we've also added a under the measure tool, we've added a, a nice little unit converter. This is just something for your convenience so you can kind of change, uh, do some quick conversions, especially if you're working with like speeds and stuff like that. Uh, converting speeds, your uh, machine might be running in millimeters and you're designing in inches. So having a nice way to kind of convert that inside the software is a nice little tool add as well. Another popular uh, ad from the community was to add import options. So you'll be glad to see now that we also support SVG and PNG. So these are two new formats that we uh, offer now. Um, PNG was a big one. We've always supported BMP and JPEG, but now PNG is being added to that list and SVG as well. So this gives you a little more flexibility in terms of File uh, the files you can import, um, uh, especially if it has like a transparent background uh, and things like that. So that's really, uh, really nice for the PNG uh, format as well. So new import options for you guys uh, on the bitmap side. And then lastly, but not least here, I will mention the box wizard uh, and the component maker. So the component maker has had a few changes to it. So if you're familiar with the component maker, um, that is, um, so we have to have something selected here.
and I forget where it's at. I am drawing a blank as to where it's at. So, <laughs> anyways, in order to uh, speed things along, so component creator, one of the things that you couldn't, uh, or we've added some alignment snaps to the edge of the contour so that when you have a contour like this selected, it, it you can easily snap to the edge without accidentally having like a little gap at the end of like a tiny little piece or something like that. So now you can snap to the edge and makes things a little bit easier there. So that's a update to the component maker. Um, and then the box wizard. We've also added a new uh, option for the box wizard. So if you've ever used the box wizard or the box maker before, uh, there's a new wizard now to go with it that uh, you can easily kind of go through step by step and change some of these some of the options uh, for creating a, a simple simple box. Um, um, you can um, it's useful for making uh, shipping boxes, uh, boxes with pullout cabinets or drawers or any kind of a simple box where where you just need to create those parts uh, to have available to you. So kind of in a nutshell, that's NROT 23. There's a lot of other little things here and there. I kind of wanted to hit the big highlights. Um, we think there's a lot of things in this version, along with a lot of other bug fixes and changes and things like that as well. So if you haven't had a chance to check out NROT 23, uh, I would highly suggest that you download the latest version. Uh, we are in the progress of, of uh, making sure that you know this is the... Uh, stable and as useful as possible. And we think you guys are going to like these new features that we've added, make your workflow better uh, and make you make your projects better. Um, again, uh, if you need help with uh, downloading or installing the soft, the new version, uh, feel free to contact our technical support. They can help you with that and get you up to date and get all of your trend or your settings transferred over from your old version. So if you're using six or seven, and it has the ability to load settings from a previous version. So if you want help with that, let our tech support know. They'd be glad to help you um, or if you have any issues with the software. So.